Johnny Dollar. Dollar, my name is Parnell. Hank Parnell. I live out here in Muddy Gap, Wyoming. Miss Parnell. You just call me Hank. All right, Hank. And what did you say the name of your city is? City? Why, it's only a little town, Dollar. Muddy Gap, Wyoming. Muddy what? Well, just what it sounds like. Muddy Gap. Muddy Gap. I see. Yeah, due west of Casper, south of Powder River. It's not too far from where the Poison Spider Creek begins. You look it up on a map, and, well, here we are. All right, I'll look it up. But uh, what seems to be your problem, Hank? Oh, Dollar, I'm the owner and editor and reporter and, well, just about everything else in Muddy Gap Weekly Tribune. Yes. I'm also the only agent for at least 50 miles around here for the Great Southwest Insurance Company. Oh, I see. Yes, sir. Now, I wonder if you could hightail yourself out here in one big, fat hurry. Well, that, uh... And that means on that little old expense account of yours... Can you do it? Well, that depends. You are talking about insurance business now, aren't you? Well, not yet, Dollar, but, uh, well, put it this way. Yeah? Unless you can give us a hand, Great Southwest is plumb liable not to have any office or agent or anything else out here anymore. Afraid I don't understand. Well, then, let's put it this way. Yes? What I want you out here for is to keep the town of Muddy Gap from getting itself blowed right clean off the map. Well, sir... Well, sir, I'll be out to see you. The CBS Radio Network brings you Mandel Kramer in the exciting adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account. America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator, yours truly, Johnny Dollar. account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to the Greater Southwest Insurance Company branch office in the town with the unlikely name of Muddy Gap, Wyoming. Following is an account of expenses incurred during my investigation of the Mad Bomber matter. Expense account item one. 192.80 transportation by plane, train, and car to Muddy Gap. That includes a stop and bite of late supper at Casper, Wyoming, where I picked up a rental car. Muddy Gap is in the middle of thousands of acres of range land for beef cattle in what used to be Indian country, where the Sioux and Cheyenne carried out many a bloody raid against wagon trains plodding along the old Oregon Trail. There's oil in this country, too. Muddy Gap consisted of a railroad siding, one main shopping street, and a surprisingly neat residential section, all of it pretty much surrounded by a tank farm. How many millions of gallons of crude oil were stored in those huge steel tanks, I'll never know. But it must have taken a mighty big pipeline to handle it. It was obvious that oil storage was the town's principal business. The combination insurance and newspaper office sat alone at the end of the street, and despite the late hour, Hank Parnell was there waiting for me. He was a long, lanky, not-too-bright character, dressed in jeans and open shirt, cowboy boots, and the inevitable white Stetson. Instead of a horse tied about front, he had a battered old touring car, minus the top and covered with oily dust, to get out and around and dig up news items for his paper, he said. Oh, uh, and I guess I forgot to tell you, Dollar, I'm also mayor of this town, a sort of city clerk. And dog catcher as well, Hank? Well, now, you know something? If we had enough head of dogs around here to worry about, I'd probably be that, too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and I'm uh, also sort of acting police chief while Rafe Tucker's down to see his relations down in Texas. Mm-hmm. So, you see, I got plenty of reason to be worried about this nice little town of ours. Worried about what, exactly? You notice all them big oil tanks all around out oh, there? Oh, you sure got a lot of them. Yes, sir. Can you imagine what would happen if one of them just... Even one of them was to maybe explode? Dollar, there'd be just one long, continuous boom. And Muddy Gap wouldn't be no more. And maybe nearly 300 nice, fine people either be dead or, at the very least, homeless. Well, do you think something like that might happen, Hank? Unless you can somehow stop it, Dollar. No, rather, I mean stop him. Who? Billy Benbow's his name. Born and brought up right here in Muddy Gap. Yeah? A real bad boy. Always in trouble. Been a little older, he'd have spent most of his time in a jail. Mm Mm-hmm. So when the last war came along, my father, he run this paper then. He got an idea for ridding us of Billy. (laughs) Yeah, so we wrote a couple of editorials or two to sort of pass on that idea. 
First thing you know, the draft board kind of caught on. The first thing he knew, Billy Boy was in the Army. Well, I'd say that was a pretty smart idea, huh? Yes, sir. Except that when Billy realized how he'd been kind of... Well, railroaded into the service. He swore loud and long as to how he'd come back here someday and get even with this town. Well, I don't see why. What's wrong with the army? Oh, not a thing. Not a thing. Just the way he got put there that rankled him. I see. Anyhow, all the time he was on the other side, they had him working on explosives. He got to be a real expert. Every time he'd set off a charge, you know, to blow up a railroad or a bridge or whatever, he'd say, yeah. Uh, now, that's for so-and-so. Bahoom. And uh, this one's for so-and-so. Bahoom. And every time he'd uh, name somebody here in this town, starting, of course, with a draft board. Became a real obsession with him. Oh, it was more than that. It was like a mania. <clears throat> yeah, Billy Benhow simply wouldn't forget. Now, surely, Hank, after all this time... Now, wait a minute, Dollar. All right, go ahead. Uh, where it was all the damage and destruction he was doing, or whatever it was, I'm not sure. But Dollar there at the end of the war, well, maybe it was shell shock or battle fatigue or whatever they want to call it, Billy went completely off base. Oh, that's too bad. Yeah. The first thing he did when he set foot back in this country, back there on the East Coast, was to start blowing things up. So, of course, he ended up in one of them state hospitals back there. He never recovered. No, never got over it. Well, if he's in the hospital, Hank... Well, he was. But then a while back, he escaped. You see what I mean? You think he'll be coming here to carry out his old threats? Well, Dollar, a couple of days ago, I got a phone call right here in this office. Yes? All the voice said to me was, I haven't forgotten. And he hung up. The voice of Billy Benbow? Well, who else? Who else could it have been? I wonder. Well, I don't. It was Billy, all right. It had to be. And what he meant was, in his twisted way, Billy meant he's coming back here to get even. Well, now, Hank... Well, who knows? Maybe Billy's right here in, the, in town right now, hiding out somewhere. just waiting for a chance to blow us all to kingdom come. And don't you forget for one minute, daughter, he was an expert with them explosives. But, Hank, if it was this, this Ben Bow, why would he make a point of warning you? Well, daughter, a man with a mind like that, I don't... Well, you may be right. Tell me, uh, have you mentioned this in your paper? Have you notified the townspeople? What, and got them all up into a panic? No, sir. But somehow, daughter, somehow we got to stop him. All right. Now, um... Listen, um, yeah? I take it you, you haven't much of a police force here. Yeah? Yeah, well, we never needed much of a force in a peaceful little town like this. Well, how about the county or state police or whoever's available? Oh, sure. What? Oh, they'd be glad to help. Yeah? Come right over here and help us all they can. When uh, and if Billy tries something. Well, by then it might be too late. Yes, sir. Because every day now, once a day, along about this time, this phone of mine is rung. And when I answered, there wasn't nobody there. So it's Billy, wherever he is, just adding up to that warning he gave me. Possibly. So, well, you got any ideas, Dollar? Well, to be perfectly honest about it, Hank, before I believed that after all these years, Billy would actually come back here, I think I'd like a little more convincing evidence. Evidence? Well, what's he got to do to convince you? You mean to say you won't believe it until he... Until he... Oh, no. There it is again. Well, maybe it's one of your subscribers. You pick up that extension. Same time as I pick up this. All right, if you like. Okay? Yeah, now. <clears throat> Hello? Hello. I think I'd better prove that I haven't forgotten. It, Billy? Is that you, Billy? That's right. Billy Benbow. Uh, now, now listen, Billy. Uh, uh, Hello? Uh, Hello? He's hung up, I'm afraid. Hey. Now, you see now, Dollar? I told you he wasn't fooling. I told you that... Listen, what was that? I don't know. It sounded like it came from somewhere just outside of this... Ah! Oh, God! Remember how much racket automobiles used to make? Time was you practically had to bellow to make yourself heard above the chatter and roar of the engine, the howl of the wind rushing by, and the rattling a rough road gave your poor old buggy and brains. 
Nowadays, with vastly improved automotive engineering and magnificent new superhighways, you literally purr along the road. This is a vast improvement, but one that can offer danger if you're not alert. You're sitting behind the wheel with the miles of highway unrolling smoothly beneath you. Suddenly a sharp curve jumps in front of you and you find that you have to use all the skill of a professional racer to navigate that curve without getting into real big trouble. Your car was so quiet that your speed had crept up stealthily during those long miles of straightaway. You were burning along without realizing it. The point here, a simple one, is this. Your speedometer was put there for a purpose, a purpose you can't afford to forget. Keep alert, take care, and get there. The next thing I remember was crawling out from under Hank's desk. Hank himself had tried to make a dash for the press room, but was forced back by the blast and ended up beside me. As for the press room, it was a shambles. Oh, my. Why here, Dollar? Why in here? Why'd he pick to blow up my press this way? Hank, didn't you say it was your father's idea? That way of getting him out of town? Yeah, you're right. And he spread the word by putting the stuff in the paper. All right, then maybe this is all he wants to do. Put your paper out of business. Yeah, maybe so, Dollar. I hope so. But he's still got to be caught and locked up again. Yes, but where do we start looking for him? Well, he was here to set off this here bomb, wasn't he? Only seconds after you talked to him on the phone? Oh, yeah, you're right. If he was somewhere on the telephone, there's no other buildings nearby. How could he be around here, too? Wait a minute. Look. Looks like this is the answer right here. Why, that's a clockwork. That's right. A little timing device. That means, Hank, that he could have been a hundred miles away. What is it, Hank? What's happened around here? Sound like a big explosion. Yeah, that's... Oh, looks like one, too. Yep. It was all right, Pete. What happened? Hey, smells to me like dynamite in here. Dynamite? What's the matter with your smeller, boy? What? It was just that big can of benzene I had for cleaning up the tap I used on the paper. It was, huh? Yeah, that's what it was. I had the dang thing up a little too close to the heater, and it blew up, that's all. Boy, sure funny it didn't start a fire then, Hank. Hey? What do you mean, funny? We were lucky, that's all. Well, I guess you were. I'll tell you this, though, Hank. I just uh, don't bother right now. It was uh, only the can of benzene. No, no, I mean about you saying there wouldn't ever be any excitement around here when I took on this job. Oh, yeah, yeah. It looks like I was wrong. What is your job, Pete? Oh, I'm sorry. I should introduce you two. This is uh, Pete... Uh, Pete... Uh... Uh, Pete Branson. Huh? Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, he, him and Tony Batten are the rest of the police force here in Muddy Gap. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, glad to meet you. What'd you say your name is? Uh, Johnny Dollar. But now listen, you, you hear the hoax out there? Yeah, Tony's out there, too. Well, you and him just keep that mob out of here, will you? Tell them everything's okay. It was just that... Just that can of benzene, like I said. Sure, Hank. Now, go on now. You and Tony, keep that mob out of here. Okay. Right, yeah, happened, it's, it's okay, folks. Just had a little accident back there in the print shop. Everything's under control. But just to make sure, uh, Hank don't want anybody hanging around. Pete now, Branson. come on, Tony. Let's get him yeah. all away from here. Come what on. What happened to him, Hank? Hank? What, you, you mean his face? Mm. The way it's all cut up that way? Yeah. Well, it up. tells me he once got drugged behind a horse. You know, foot caught in a stirrup. Oh, I see. So the one thing he won't ever do anymore is get himself on top of a horse. <laughs> me, I don't blame him. Mm. Um, Hank, that excuse that you gave for the explosion. Oh, you think I should have told him the truth and let him spread the word and get the whole town into a panic? I... Well, if we were sure, there won't be any more of them. That Billy's satisfied his yen for revenge by putting your paper out of business, okay, but if your fellow townspeople are still in danger, and uh, didn't you mention the draft board? Who are they? Oh, they're all long gone, daughter, except for old Grandpa Whedon. Oh, Lord. Well? Oh, Lord, that old house of his, it's, it's, it's right over near the terminal end of one of them pipelines off the tank farm. And if that place were to get blowed up, and if one of the tanks were to go, why, there'd be nothing left of this town. Then if Billy is still around... Well, how can we know? Wait a minute, uh, telephone. What? It's the old-fashioned kind. It's no dial, which means you have to call an operator. Well, sure, Which but... also means that the operator has to call you. Come on, Hank. Well, what are you, you going to do? We're going to find out where that... You know. Hello? Hank Parnell, whatever happened down there at your newspaper office? Listen, operator... Whatever you had blow up over there fairly shook me out of my chair. I haven't had such an explosion here in Muddy Gap since Allie Briscoe still blew up and everybody thought the whole tank farm was gone. Um, 
Look, miss. Look, Hank, you better tell me what happened so I can... Well, I, I mean, you know, in case somebody calls in and wants to know... Operator, well, will you listen to me a moment? What? Well, who are you? I'm speaking for Hank Parnell. Well, anything happened to him? Is he all right? No, he's, he's all right. Now, listen. Yes? Just before the accident, you rang this phone. Oh, that's right. I had a call for him. Do you know who was calling? No, he kept his voice low. Well, what'd you say your name is? Well, I didn't, and it doesn't matter. But what I want to know is, where did... You know something? Hmm? You sound exactly like that Johnny Dollar on the radio. Operator, listen, please. And if you are, and you're in town... Miss... Well, the folks around here would sure like to know that they would. Now, listen, do you know where that call for Hank Parnell came from? Well, of course I do. Where? Well, the one outside phone booth we have over outside the drugstore. Okay, thanks. You heard? Yeah, Dollar. Then he is in town. I'm afraid so. Hank, you better take it. Okay. I'll listen in. <clears throat> Hello? You got the sample, Parnell. The big one's coming later. Hey, Billy. That's right. Later when? What do you mean by later? Maybe. Maybe tonight. Hey, Billy, listen. Hello? Hey. Dollar, Dollar, we got to get the people out of this town. 300 of them before he can strike again? I don't oh. know. I don't know. I don't know. But we got to try. It's too late. And you know it. Well, then what can we do? Dollar? It's a long chance, Hank. I know it is. What? But I'm betting that he's been around this town a long time. Maybe for weeks. Now, doesn't that mean anything to you? Well, I, 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 don't, I, don't, I don't get it. All right, listen. Now, this crazy hunch of mine may be all wrong. But if you'll let me handle this my own way... Will you, Hank? In spite of the fact that it may mean jeopardizing all the people in town. Anything you say, Dollar, as long as we do something. All right. Those two boys on the force, do you know where to reach them right now? Who, Tony and Pete? Yes. Yes. All right. Call them up and have them come over here. Then if you and they will follow my orders to the letter in without question. Well? We'll do anything. Okay. Get them over here. It meant staking a lot on my limited knowledge of the criminal mind, possibly risking a lot of innocent lives. But I felt sure now that my hunch was right. Fortunately for my plan, Tony Batten got there first. When I told Hank and Tony what their job was, for a moment they couldn't believe I was serious. But they agreed to say nothing to anyone, not even to Pete. Tony went outside then, waited in Hank's old car. When Peter Branson arrived, Hank put him under my orders and he and Tony took off. Well, I guess I was right, huh, Mr. Dollar? That was some kind of set explosion in here, wasn't it? That's right, Pete. It was set, all right, by an expert. And you got some idea who might have done it? Either you and I are going to find out, or this town's in danger of being blown to bits. Are you kidding? Not a bit of it. I, uh, I see you carry a gun. Yes, sir, right here in handy. And if what you say is true, maybe you ought to have one, too. Well, you, uh, better let me have yours then, Pete. Well, now, wait a minute, Mr. Dollar. Your idea. Well, well yeah, I know, but... Well, let uh... me have it. Orders, Pete. You're under my orders, remember? Yes, sir. All right. Yes, sir, here you are. Good. Now, shall we go? Where are we headed? Out to see an old man. Old Grandpa Whedon. Oh, now, you don't think he had anything to do with this explosion, do you? Pete, I think this mad bomber plans to hit him next. Did you say mad? That's right. Oh, I see. We're going to go over to Grandpa's place with a fine-tooth comb because a bomb may be planted, may be ticking away out there right now. And if we don't find anything out there... Well, we'll see. But well, why do you think this uh, this man would pick on him? Is it a man? Well, I well, certainly guess so. But why on Grandpa? Well, because once he was a member of a draft board. Well, now, <laughs> that don't make sense, does it? Maybe not, but does anything make sense where a madman is concerned? You're calling him that again. You don't like that word, hmm? Well, it makes no difference to me, but if there if it was a madman out on the loose out there... Pete, I'd... he might look every bit as harmless as you do, or as I do. Yeah, I see. Okay, then. Let's go on out there and have a look, but I'm betting we don't find anything. You don't think so, hmm? Well, I bet on it. Well, then maybe we won't. Um, it seems to me Hank had a little trouble remembering your last name, Pete. How long is it uh, that you've been on the force? Huh? Oh, a few weeks, I guess. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. E ever since you first came to town, huh? Hmm? Why, yeah, practically. Mm -hmm. And before that? Oh, you know, working around the ranches. And... Oh, I thought you didn't ride. <laughs> well, no, not anymore. Oh, what do you do then? Oh, you know, odd jobs. Well, why are you asking? 
Well, your hands. They look kind of soft to me, you know. Mm -hmm. Another thing, uh, come to think of it, seems to me you immediately recognized the smell of dynamite when you came in here. Didn't you? Oh, look, you want to go out there, let's go. Uh, and uh, those scars on your face? What you getting at? They're from an explosion, aren't they? I said, what you getting at? I've seen too many of those kind of scars not to recognize them. And you knew that because of them, nobody around here would recognize you. Didn't you, Billy? Okay, doll, that's enough. You see this? You got another gun. That's right. So instead of reaching for the one I gave you, just you reach up high now, reach. I knew I'd have trouble when you come in town. Because you ain't dumb like the rest of these jerks around here. But not anymore, Dollar, because I'm going to kill you. You think so, Billy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I go back to my place and I get the rig. It's all ready except for the setting of the clock on. Billy? Shut up. You know where I planted it then? Yeah, out by old Grandpa Weed. You hear me? Out there by the tank farm. And I set the clock. So I only got time to get away. Get away in that nice car of yours, Dollar. Now, Billy, listen to me. No, no, no. You're only trying to stall me. So first it's you, and then I go get that rig. This rig, Billy? Huh? This bomb we found over in your room? You found it. You better drop that gun, Billy. No! Tell that! Oh, you pull that trigger, Tony, I still get off a shot. He's right. Let me take care of this. Oh, no, no. Wowee. That's a mighty good left you got there, Dollar. I guess he was right, though, Hank, about you being pretty stupid. Well, well now, you just wait Didn't one you of think me... about what might have happened if Tony pulled off a shot right next to that bomb you have in your hand? Mm. Oh, my gosh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you should have. Remarks? Why bother on this one? As for the expense account, uh... Let's call it a total of 350 bucks. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Now, here is our star to tell you about next week's story. Next week, a beautiful girl, a handful of coins, and a mysterious disappearance. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, is written by Jack Johnstone, produced and directed by Bruno Zerato Jr., music supervision by Ethel Huber. Johnny Dollar is played by Mandel Kramer. Also featured in our cast were Court Benson as Hank Parnell, Lawson Zerbe as Pete Branson, Cliff Carpenter as Billy Benbow, and Barbara Kassar as the operator. Be sure to join us next week, same time, same station, for another exciting story of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. Art Hanna speaking. The number one network for news, expanded CBS News on the CBS radio network. This is WROW Music in Albany, New York. A newcomer in town can feel mighty lonesome. Welcome wagon hostesses make these newcomers feel wanted when they make their cordial welcome wagon visits. Their baskets contain useful gifts from civic-minded businessmen, invitations to participate in varied social and volunteer activities of the many civic agencies in the community. In addition, every welcome wagon call recipient in the greater Albany or Schenectady areas, as well as Del Mar, Latham, or Scotia, is invited to attend the local welcome wagon club. This is an organization of newcomers all anxious to make friends. Various welcome wagon clubs vary from 30 to 150 members who meet monthly. Their interests include bowling, golf, cards, handcraft, and dancing. You can help to make your new neighbor feel at home. Call State 59640 today and make your neighbor eligible for the many opportunities in a welcome wagon club. Remember, State 59640. WROW Music Time now, 25 minutes before 7 p.m. <laughs>